Educator or the core educator for Ideal 3.0, Junior Ram, Miss Kaushiki Ishwa. Can we have for Kaushiki, ma'am? So Kaushiki Ishwa is a third year student at Veranda House, pursuing history, philosophy, and a minor in sociology. She has worked in leading feminist think tank in India and has been published in Live Wire, Madonna, and Feminist in India. To name a few achievements, she has core educated in Stephen. SRCC and has broken and Malaysia UADC, the largest Asian debating tournament, and was the finalist of UHURU World 2023 and an invited judge at Tokyo for Docsbridge and Vice Chancellor Cup. So, over to you, Koshiki, ma'am. Thank you so much, Devika, for that gracious invitation. We congratulate both the teams, yeah, yeah, yeah. opposition and proposition, for their commendable journey. You have been selected out of 500 participants. I would love if everybody can just congratulate you. <laughs> it's an absolutely amazing run. And we are so proud of having so small kids articulating all their thoughts in absolute perfection. For junior finals, we will be having a panel of seven. And the judges are as follows. We have Sanya Sethi, who is a graduate from Hindu College. She has pursued philosophy honors and she's broken a number of national tournaments and she has been a runner-up of CBS and LSR, one of the largest national tournaments in India right now. We are very glad to have you coming. Uh, Harsh Darshan Upadhyay is chairing the junior finals. He is the president of Sri Venkateshwara College's debating society. He's also broken in multiple national tournaments. After the entire debate tournament, all the participants are requested to approach all of their judges for individual feedback because I'm really sure that all of the judges have individually contributed to their own journey, but they have some somewhat wonderful insights to give you as well. Uh, we are glad to have you, Harsh, here. Our third judge for junior finals is Shalvin. Shalvin is currently pursuing for political science honors from Hindu College. He's broken in a number of national tournaments. If you look at every national tournament that's out there, you will find Shalvin in every one of them, probably like being on finals panels, speaking at a finals, and just absolutely loving all the kids because he has contributed to the development of the insights that kids probably have to do it in Awaz India. Are we glad to have you, Shalvin? Our fourth judge for tonight is Divya. Divya is currently pursuing political science from Deshbandhu College. She's also a debate educator, but she's also broken one multiple national tournaments, but she's also been a part of the curriculum development at Awas, and she's contributed in the development of most of the kids in India. This looks like uh, training Mayo College, training multiple other schools, TSRS, etc. So she has wonderful insights to get all the judges, uh, all the participants after the round. We're glad to have you, Divya. Um, our fifth judge is Salin. Salin is a part of the IIT Delhi Depsoc. He's pursuing a, a, a subject like NEETEC in IIT Delhi Depsoc and he's also contributed multiply in training the juniors but also ensuring that IIT Delhi Depsoc has reached that prestigious moment with Talin as its participant. We are glad to have you Talin here. Uh, we also have Raghav with us. Raghav is also a part of IIT Delhi Depsoc and he's also pursuing BTEC. We are glad to have you, uh, Raghav, here. I think you have a wonderful insight to give all the participants after the junior category is done. Great. Uh, the last uh, judge that we have here is Shubhankar. Shubhankar is the head of the IIT Delhi Depsoc and he's also contributed to the development of the way like prestigious IIT Delhi Depsoc has been. We are really proud to have you, Shubhankar, here. I, you'll be having like wonderful insights to give all the participants after the junior category is done. Uh, with that being said, we have esteemed panels ready. We also have all the participants set afoot with the kind of arguments they have to present in finals. It's a very prestigious moment. I hope you all make it. Congratulations.
Oh, cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, I hope everything is sorted. Uh, hi, congratulations on making this far. Great to have you. Uh, we'll be keeping the timer and we'll be having taps at 1 and 3. So, Arush will be here and they'll be giving you taps, right? Uh, so, yeah, before, uh, like, uh, without further ado, we can call. Prime Minister to start the case from side proposition. Sorry, first speaker from side proposition. When are you ready? Am I audible? Yes. I'll be starting in three, two, one. Can somebody help me with the mic? It's a bit hard because it's going low and high. Oh, do you want to? Do you want to? It's always I think it's I'll be starting in three, two, one, go. Floods, fires, earthquakes, destruction. The planet is telling us it needs to be protected at any cost. There is no time to delay. Good evening, Judy. The proposition firmly stands in support of the motion today. As first speaker, I will first set up this debate, second, set our burdens, third, our arguments, and then close. Climate change is a real threat right now. Today, there is a greater awareness for the environment. But for a developing nation like India, there is m many struggles already. It isn't the topmost priority. Policies in general are created based on what the government thinks people want or need. So additionality works as an external push. It makes governments work on and pass policies exclusively for the environment, it becomes a necessary action. The burden before us, therefore, is to show you that 1. Environment is better protected on our side. 2. It happens fastest here. We will show you how this is good for the environment, the implementers, policy followers and society at large. To do this, we have four arguments. We will show you how the additionality will lead to 1. Transparent policies. 2. Targeted efforts. 3. Global land and for adoption of best practices. Now I'll start with my first argument transparent policies. Without transparency, there can be a lot of greenwashing. Crop corporates can misuse policies for economic reasons and present them as environmentally friendly. But with an additionality, we have a clear communication. Stakeholders clearly understand objectives, strategies, and outcomes of the environmental initiatives. Better accountability. It sets a clear standard for measuring impact. The government can be held accountable if targets are not met. This safeguards the credibility and integrity of the initiatives, and therefore, they are better outcomes. My second argument is about targeted effort. When environmental policies are clogged with other agendas, there can be many problems. Let's say the government decides to give incentives for renewable energy in an employment generation policy. Now two things will happen. One, critical environmental issues can take a back seat. Or two, it can be counterproductive for all. The project could become expensive, so employment goals become difficult to achieve, so no one wins. On the other hand, targeted effort for environment will lead to maximum impact. Resources, regulations and initiatives can be directed towards projects that give most benefits. I will make room for the innovation and risking take and risk taking. In conclusion, additionality is necessary to properly meet climate goals. Without it, climate considered actions can be possible can't be possible or possible actually. But, but they will never be enough. And with that I rest my case. Now our second speaker will give you arguments three and four. Thank you. Thanking the speaker for their very fine speech calling first speaker from side opposition. Panel, note I'll be starting in three, two, one. Greetings to the jury, my worthy opposition and the house at large. 
I am the first speaker Ida speaking against the motion. The framing of this debate is as follows. Environmental investments that lead also to gender development will have a larger impact on developing nations like ours. First, I will rebut my opponent. Well, you said that your side can prevent greenwashing. My response to that is, however, there are practical challenges in implementing this for developing countries like India. Because developing countries will want to focus on development alongside the environment rather than just environmental conservation. Now let's see who are the major stakeholders here. Firstly, the environment. Secondly, the government of India. Thirdly, citizens of India. And lastly, Indian businesses focused on growing commerce. What will we prove to you today? We will prove, firstly, developing nations like ours need both development and environmental improvements. Secondly, focusing on both together will lead to a larger impact. We have four core arguments to prove this. Firstly, integrated development approach benefits developing countries. Secondly, resource optimization is important. Thirdly, there are practical challenges in implementation of additionality criteria. And lastly, we need flexibility in implementation. The second speaker on my side will explain the last two arguments and I will jump directly to the first. Adopting additionality will hinder holistic development in developing countries. It will lead to missed opportunities for projects that could have been both environmental and developmental benefits. For example, integrating environmental policies into urban planning policies can promote green infrastructure which can improve the air quality, reduce global warming, global warming and enhance living standards. Secondly, combining environment and development objectives allow the optimization of resources. For example, a cleanup project may attract new businesses to that area, efficiently utilizing unlimited resources. These indirect benefits can further contribute to the general development of that area and economic de development for our country. In conclusion, environmental policies that also lead to general development create a more sustainable future, ensuring a thriving planet for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, speaker, for the very fine speech, calling second speaker from side proposition. Thus, enhancing India's reputation. 
carbon emission projects successfully demonstrate additionality by showing mitigation efforts like clean development mechanism under the Kyoto Protocol, which drive real additional reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. In inclusion, adherence to all the additionality criteria in the UN will put India amongst the list of key global players that are actively contributing to the issues of safeguarding the climate. A seat at the table will allow India to influence the global regulation on a climate policy in the future and have an active voice as a developing country. Mr. Bangali rightly said, environment and the economy are two sides of the same coin. If we cannot sustain the environment, we cannot sustain ourselves. With that, I rest my case. Thanking speaker for the very fine speech, calling second speaker from side opposition. Proposition. <laughs> I will start. 
start in three, two, one. Good afternoon, judges. I am Navanya Chopra. Three things I'll state in my speech today are: firstly, some broad arguments and rebuttals; secondly, clashes; and lastly, concluding with some exclusive impacts. My steam pan. We some proposition will help you conclude today that additionality-based policies are essential to protect India's environmental ecosystem for future generations. Here's what our team has been able to establish so far. India is currently ranked eighth most polluted country in the world. As Obama said, we are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change, and the last generation that can do something about it. And we need to do it yesterday. Speed of action in a focused and targeted manner is urgently needed. India is currently ranked 121st for achieving their climate goals. It's the lowest among South Asian nations. It is clear our current action plans are not working. We have all looked. Policies based on additionality will help meet important targets for greater impact. Side opposition tries to explain how additionality is only an obligation of developed countries and will drain our limited resources. But they are fake to see this through India's lenses. Let me explain. India successfully implemented policies based on additionality. Clean development mechanism or perform achieve and trade enable trading in carbon credits to meet emission targets. These policies are easy to monitor. They also measure impact accurately. We agree. India does not have surplus funds. India gets only 44 billion USD per year. This is one fourth of what it needs to meet its current plans, which makes it critical to use our funds efficiently. Added focused policies based on additionality to prevent life-threatening disasters like droughts, floods, forest fires is the only option. Moving on to clashes, Section 48A of our Constitution requires our government to protect our national environment. India currently spends less than 0.1 percent on such policies. A nation where two million lives are lost every year to pollution. Adopting policies based on additionality is not a need, but a necessity. To conclude, let me state our impacts, which truly deserves your vote. We have established that policies based on additionality have more potential gains than harms in India. Additionally, additionality of a globally accepted, transparent, measurable impact across India, which saves lives and livelihoods, and that is precisely why. Team Delhi has won this debate, and with that, Team Delhi is proud to propose. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker, for the very fine speech. Calling third speaker, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes. yes. Okay. I'll start in three, two, one. Greetings to the jury, my worthy opponents, and the house at large. Today, I am here to debate on the motion. This house believes that the government of India should make environmental policies based on the additionality criteria, and I firmly oppose this motion. My team had two burdens. Firstly, to show developing nations like ours need both environment and development improvements, and secondly, focusing on both together will lead to a larger impact than focusing on just the environment. We fulfill both these burdens with the following arguments: one, developing countries like India need an integrated development approach. For example, Brazil has combined efforts to conserve the Amazon rainforest with improving livelihoods of local communities. Two, combining environment and development goals allows for optimization of resources. The green revolution in India, which leverages technology, not only improves farmer productivity but also improves the environment. Three, there are practical challenges to implementing purely environmental projects in developing nations. India has higher priority 
arguments. Firstly, my other points have argued that their side provides a targeted effort of conserving the environment. To, to that, my response is, we think that we have more pressing issues and we should utilize our resources to focus on both environment and development issues. Secondly, my other opponents also argue that their side provides better accountability. To that, my response is, while this might be true, they have not considered that India is a developing nation and, they, and instead of focusing on being more accountable, we need to focus on development. To sum up, in our world, we have an integrated development approach which includes environmental goals, optimized resources, and flexibility in implementation for developing nations. The proposition has been shown how they will have a larger impact by focusing on just the environment. That is why we win this debate. And my team and I rest our case, but never our stance. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker, for the very fine speech. Thanking both the sides for the very fun and engaging debate uh, since it's a close round. So, no verdict. You can reach out to any of us.